Hello, and thank you for joining us. This is No Sound Bites Allowed, and I am your host, Michael Voss, Dragon of the Southern Tier. I'm happy to be here with you today, January 15th of 2022, to speak with you about something that I think we've all noticed and is getting worse and worse. An issue that is affecting each and every one of us, whether we pay attention to politics or not, whether we enjoy one form of entertainment or another, it doesn't really matter. There is a collision, and I think we all know it, and it's getting worse. It's not getting better. And we want to talk a little bit about that, and we want to hear what you have to say about it. But first, we do want to mention, if this is the first time that you are seeing our channel, we welcome you and thank you for being part of our audience. We do long-form political commentary. And every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we do a live stream with you. We reach out on all social media that the internet overlords will allow to be able to receive your chats, your tweets, and your phone calls from anywhere in the world to tell us what you think, to hear your voice, because we believe in the First Amendment. We believe in free speech, not just for Americans, but for everyone. Because no matter what your government thinks, no matter what the internet overlords think, you have the right to speak. And we hope that you will share that with us every Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to tell us what you think about the issues that are affecting us all. Uh, We like to take our downtime seriously. We, We like to enjoy our entertainment. In particular, we like to play video games. It's one of the things we enjoy, and you may have seen it, Uh, seen some of the videos we've done on it, we're very bad at video games. Doesn't matter though. That's what we like to do. It's something we enjoy and many people enjoy watching us play video games badly. That's fine. It's entertainment. It's meant to be a distraction to take us away from the politics of the day. But we've been seeing over the last several years, more and more, whether it's in music or in movies or in video games or cartoons, even when we're watching sports, we see more and more that our entertainment is political, that we are being forced to have to look at politics every time we look at any aspect of what's going on in terms of our entertainment. And that has been getting worse. I think we all will agree with that that we are seeing this over and over again. The things that we take as recreation are things that are becoming political. And it's even beyond just talking about video games or movies. We see this in just the foods that we eat. You just can't escape it. And I understand. By all means, we are a political commentary channel. Absolutely, we speak from the right. We're right-leaning. At the same time, when we try and take our downtime, when we try and relax, when we step away from the politics just to enjoy something for the fact that we enjoy it, we can't do it anymore because we're being told over and over again, if if you don't agree with a political point of view, well, you're sexist, you're evil, you're racist, you're a phobe and an ist, all kinds of things. And we saw that most recently come to its head when G4, a reboot of the G4 TV, a channel on entertainment talking about video games that ended in 2013 and has reborn, has come back and has been reborn. And the new version, G4 TV, Um, been around since October of 2021, their host, Indiana Black, this week came out and decided to tell her audience that if you don't agree with her politics, if you don't agree with her political preference, well, then it's your fault. You are a sexist because there's sexism in gaming and her not being bangable. Well, that's your problem. That's your fault. How dare you not consider that? In fact, going by bounding into comics, they state, according to G-Play's host, Indiana Black, the various instances of pushback and disagreement she has received during her time on the network are not only the result of sexism in gaming, but 
also because she puts herself in, she put, as she put it herself, the apparent fact is that she is not as bangable as the previous host. To be able to play a video game, to be able to play a video game that you may like, to even find out about whether a game or a gaming platform, to find out about your entertainment, well, that depends on your politics. And if your politics are wrong, well, then you are wrong. You have a problem. You are an evil person. And that's really shocking. I mean, that's incredibly shocking that someone would say that. And yet, it seems to be par for the course. I mean, this isn't new. We've been hearing about this not just in video games, not just in movies. I mean, it goes all the way back. Let's take a look back real quick at October of 2020. And we were seeing this on not just Kanye West, but also Ice Cube, as we spoke about at this time. Just a couple years later, in 2018, was evil. And they had to stop him. They had to get rid of his business. They had to make him a pauper. He was a horrible, evil man because he suddenly said, you know what? President Trump's been doing all right for black people. He's not a bad president. Oh, my God, you can't say that. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Kanye went from hating Republicans to loving Republicans. He's a sellout. Wait a minute, let's get this right. He said he didn't like the policies of George Bush, which is a man, not the party. And then he said he liked President Trump, the man, not the party. You can do both. You can do that. Except if you happen to be black, a man, and in America. What we saw with Ice Cube and uh, what he said was he spoke to Biden and he spoke to Trump. Biden said, vote for me and we'll talk about it afterwards, which has resulted in 47 years of doing nothing for black people, according to the far left. According to the very left that is trying to elect Joe Biden, Joe Biden has done nothing positive for black people for 47 years. And when we see Ice Cube come to Joe Biden and say, I have this plan, Joe Biden says, well, just vote for me and we'll talk about it later. And then when he goes and gives that same exact plan to the other side, to Donald Trump and the Republicans, Donald Trump says, hey, let's have a conversation about that. Let me change my plan called the Platinum Plan. He changed his plan. He took action immediately. He did something. Our entertainers and entertainment is divided by our politics, where you can't say that. You can't do that. You can't have a political ideology that is different than what the hosts want. And if you do, for whatever reason, well, then you're the problem. Even if your problem isn't with the politics, but what being presented, the entertainment that you're getting. Let's think about this. As we hear about this story, this story has been gaining more and more strength. And what we see is that people had a question about the host, Indiana Black. And they noted that what she's confessing is she doesn't actually play the video games that she's reviewing. There is a script made up of dozens of people that may or may not include herself, that she reads off about video games. And therefore, when there are questions from the audience saying, that doesn't sound right, that doesn't make sense, you don't sound sincere, that's something that's sexist. And if you point out that problem, well, then you are a problem. You are an issue. Because one of our co-hosts, Adam Sessler, he decided that, well, if you're questioning the way they do their format, if you're questioning the quality of the work they're providing, well, then you're a Republican and therefore you're evil. As he says, and he said this on Twitter, as I said yesterday, all the Republicans in my family can eat feces and die while I sip something bubbly. Coming from G4, the answer is you're letting your unconscious biases ruin my day and gatekeeping the gaming space. It's you. This is your fault. This is your problem. You unconsciously are creating microaggressions because you have a question 
about the quality of the entertainment that you are taking in, that you are questioning what you are being presented. And because you have a question, because you may not think the level of quality is as high as it could be, well, then you're a sexist, you're an ism and a phobe, you're an evil Republican, and they don't want you. They want you to be silent. They want you to accept what they are doing without question. In fact, it's gotten to the point that now we see that their reaction has been this. Saying hi to the quartering. People saying hello to someone in chat. Boom. Ban. Someone said geeks and gamers greater than G4. That was enough to get them banned, to get their message deleted from chat. This is pathetic. And it was over and over again. You have Krista, a female, who says Olivia, Ma Olivia Munn is fire. Just saying. Boom, that gets deleted. All Jeremy had to say was that ratio, though, he got deleted. But Adam Pereira decides that, well, it's just because a nine-year-old's in the chat. No, people are having real criticisms about what was said. That's what we're seeing more and more coming from the left. If you have a critique, if you have a question, if you have something that is not approved, an idea that they haven't stated already, well, then it's your fault. And it's not just in entertainment, it is a reflection of what we're seeing in the politics. And it's pretty bad. I mean, let's take a look. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, earlier this year, January 3rd, was in Miami. And we know that there was a big furor because she was in Miami maskless. She was running around Miami without any masks on, and she decided, well, that's perfectly fine. Even though she insists that if you're in New York State, where she represents the New York 14th district, well, you must wear a mask. You must be vaccinated. You must do what the government says. You cannot question it. There is no dispute. You must do what they say because of the government. And she ran around Miami for days without a mask on. And for those people, now, we, we, we ourselves thought, well, when she was saying this, this is because of her politics. She's down in Florida trying to uh, ensure that she can get elected to the Senate. But most of the media, were, most everyone was looking at this, and they were calling out the fact that not only was she being sexist in the statements she was making, she was anti-feminist. And it was hypocritical for what she was saying. Even when we look overseas, it was that obvious that people from other countries, in this case, the United Kingdom, were looking at the situation and pointing out that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was being duplicitous. And her cover story, her answer to this was, well, if you have a question, well, you must, it must be because of sexism. It must be because you want to have sex with her. Again, it's a microaggression. It's your fault. It's you. How dare you? How is it any different from what we're hearing in G4 where we are being told, well, it's your problem. It's your microaggression. Again, we're seeing this in every form of media that we have seen, that you cannot question this. You cannot have any opinion about this. In fact, it's so bad that we have seen it get to the extent where individuals who have certain political ideologies are willing to tell people that not only can you not do this based on the color of your skin or based on your gender and sex, but that they will do anything to try and change your opinion to force you into their point of view. I think I'm kidding. How about when we saw in 2020, October of 2020, Chelsea Handler talking about 50 Cent. And this is what she had to say at the time. <laughs> and I and I had to remind him that he was a black person, okay. so let he me, can't vote let, for Donald Trump. Let me stop there. Did you just hear what she just said? Did you, did you hear what she just said? Wait a minute. You're black, so you can't vote. She, ha she, Chelsea Handler, had to tell a black man that he's black, which I have had that happen to me. When I went out and I was backing the blue, uh, there was a back the blue event in my region, in the southern tier of New York. I was at, I was speaking, and had BLM come up, and they were, I had young white women and some black men say, you're black, 
You can't do that. I'm like, I'm an American. I can do anything I want. But according to Chelsea Handler, according to Joe Biden, according to people in, in this mindset, whether it's BLM, Antifa, the Democratic Socialists, they're telling you, you can't do that because you're black. I would love to hear what the response would be when they come out and tell a woman, you're not a woman, you can't do that. For every woman that's out there and everyone who's making their vote, remember, they're defining what you can do. If you think that was the worst thing they said, no, no, wait, it gets worse. Listen to the rest of this. And that he shouldn't be influencing an entire swath of people who may listen to him. So not only are you black, not only can't you vote for someone, you can't tell other black people that they have a free choice, that they have a choice in America. Imagine someone saying, hey, you're white. You don't get to vote. And if you do decide to vote, you're going to vote the way I want you to. Okay, but she gets even worse. Because he's worried about his own personal pocketbook. So I haven't heard back from him yet, but I, I am willing to you know, steal the deal in more ways than one if he changes his mind and publicly denounces Donald Trump. I might be willing, okay. willing to go for another spin, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay, you know how insulting that is? She just, she's saying that she wants to use sex to buy the vote of 50 Cent. That her sex is worth more than his freedom, his income, his, more than America. It really is that bad. This is how far we have seen politics, specific and particular politics, have gotten into our life. And this is something that is being taught to our kids every day. If you're a student in high school, and if you're in college, this is being reinforced day after day after day, in class after class. In fact, we talked a little bit about it when we were covering what happened at SUNY Broome in the southern tier of New York when we had a program teaching kids a very specific point of view that you could only think one way. If we restrict the way people get to speak and what they get to speak about, then we don't get the net outcome of, a, of the best outcome, of the correct outcome if a correct outcome exists. They're couching this, as we have said, in these small cells of individuals who want to be in a consensus, who don't want to be ostracized, who don't want to be isolated, that have a path put before them, that they're told they must stay on, that they must reach the goal, the objective on this path without any interruptions, without going anywhere else the information might lead to or introduce any questions that would take us off of that path, and we don't have the ability to be able to speak freely. That doesn't mean to not speak respectfully, but we don't have the right to speak freely. You are being chained to the path, and the path has a goal, and that goal only leads one way. That's the problem, isn't it? That we are seeing over and over again. You go to school, you're taught, you have only one choice. You go to college, and they reinforce, you only have one choice. You go to play a video game, and you're told, you only have one choice. You don't have freedom. You don't have a voice. And if you try and use that voice, well, then you're going to be punished for it. It's going to be held against you. You're going to be silenced. People are going to delete your voice. They're going to remove you as a human being. You're going to be discounted and, and thrown to the side. Whether it's in music or in movies or TV shows or video games, or sports, you don't matter. The message matters. And it's the message that's been approved by a small group of people that have nothing to do with you. And if you have any question, if you have any doubt, you are the person that's a problem. You're at fault. You've committed a microaggression. You are an ist and a phobe. 
How are we supposed to ent enjoy entertainment? How are we supposed to relax? How are we supposed to regain our energies and refocus and re and approach issues that affect us all in some kind of constructive way when we are never given a chance to calm down, to reflect, to think, or more importantly, to gather our energies and approach things from a new point of view in a new way? Look, you know, I I understand. I play video games. I play video games just like everybody else. I drink Coca-Cola. Well, I drink, I actually drink Pepsi, but I drink soda like everyone else. And I want to play video games and, and, and watch movies and have entertainment just like everyone else. Why is it that whenever I'm trying to just relax, I have to be told that everything I'm doing if it isn't approved, is a microaggression. Then if it isn't what was approved, what has been told to me, what has been allowed for me, if I'm not doing what I was told and programmed to do, well, then I am a problem. How can you say that? Especially in America, a nation known for individual freedom, for individual choices, to be able to speak about the things that we believe whether or not anyone else agrees. On this channel, you don't have to agree with us. But if you're a member of the left, if you're part of the Democratic Party, the progressives, the Democratic Socialists of America, then it seems more and more you don't get a choice on that. You must agree. The choice has already been made for you. If you're black, you can't vote certain ways. If you're a woman, you can't vote, you can't think, you can't enjoy products in a certain way. If you're a straight, you can't enjoy products in a certain way. These are all problems. You don't have any other option, according to these people. Is it any wonder that so many people are running away from organizations like G4TV? They're abandoning certain video games and series why they won't go to movies like Terminator, Dark, uh, what is it, Dark Fate or Dark Territory. That people reject these things in mass because it's not what we want, because it's not freedom. This isn't China or North Korea or Russia or Venezuela or Cuba. We're not beholden to the Democratic Socialists of America. And every answer to every question about our lives and what we are doing, the answer to everything isn't just microaggression, sexism, feminism, uh, intersectionality, critical race theory, gender identity politics. That isn't the answers. Everything isn't just, well, you disagree, so you must be evil. Hollywood, in part, video games, in part, entertainment, in part, are starting to reject this idea that there is no freedom. And just because they put up a movie like the 355 and say, here it is, it's, it is PC, it is properly worded, it has the right diversity, it has the right uh, focus on women or various protected groups. So you must like this, you must consume this, you must give us your money and you must obey. And more and more people are saying, no, no, I don't. And no, I won't. And we should say that. We go to entertainment to take ourselves away, to recharge our batteries, to give ourselves an opportunity to reflect, to really focus ourselves so that we can approach the problems of day-to-day -day life in a better way. It's up to you. You can do whatever you want. If you want to be part of that program, you want to support it, fantastic. Please do. That's your choice. I won't. I like the original G4. I don't like the new version. I don't like people who tell me that I have no choice and that my decisions and my preferences are somehow invalidated because of their political preferences. You're under no obligation to agree. You're under no obligation to accept things as I see it, as this channel sees it, as my political preference may want you to. But you know what? 
That's your freedom. And I believe in your freedom be above and beyond everything else. We can't accept this anymore. We really need to step up and say to Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Corey Bush, Indiana Black, G4, Adam Sessler, to Chelsea Handler, and so many, many others, you don't get to choose my life for me. The government doesn't get to choose my life for me. Whether that's my choice in entertainment, in a movie, a video game, characters that I like, movies and stories that I enjoy, it doesn't matter what aspect of my life it is. I'm an American. I'm an individual. I get to make choices. You don't have to like them. You don't have to agree with them. But God forbid you don't allow me to have them. Maybe you disagree. Maybe you think, Mike, no, you, you just don't understand. Maybe you say these microaggressions are real. Maybe you say that this is a problem and we need to do what is approved. That's fine. You may think that. And if you do, please explain to me why. Because what I'm seeing is the destruction of not just America, not just society, but individuality. And I think that's a problem we really, finally, need to stand up and say no. But again, if you disagree, we're actually happy to hear your voice. We want to hear what you have to say. We look forward to seeing your comments, and we hope that you'll join us in our live stream on Sunday at 2.30 p.m. to tell us what you think about this and the other issues that are affecting our nation and our world. We thank you, and we hope you'll be well.